The Blue Lock manga has been absolutely heating up lately, and I feel as though the current match featuring Bastard vs. Ubers is giving us a taste of what we'll be looking at quite soon in the manga. If you are not caught up to Blue Lock, or you're an anime only, and don't want to be spoiled, I would suggest clicking off. But for those of you caught up, let's get into some meta-breaking analysis. Firstly, by saying, MetaVision got exposed as not being the penultimate ability. However, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon, but this is the first time we're being exposed to an alternative, an aesthetic, opinionated approach to viewing the field that defers, but probably delineates from MetaVision. So let's start by talking about the narrative development of MetaVision as an ability. When we were first introduced to MetaVision, it was a game-breaking cheat code that made all of the Blue Lock participants look like fodder. Then, the puzzle pieces started coming together for our main character, Asagi, and through his eyes, we were able to understand how MetaVision works. The clairvoyant-like perception of the field and the toll that it could take on the body and the mind. It was even enough to topple players with more honed physiques. And of course, when you get a shiny new toy, you exaggerate it, but now every other person is looking over their shoulder to get more information on the field. And some of these people, we should have foreseen coming to understand this ability. Nico is literally just an edgy Asagi. Aiku actually was the first person portrayed with Metavision during the Japanese U20 match, and it makes sense because he has plenty of experience overseeing the field at large as a goalie. And Snuffy is a strategic mastermind that was able to convince even Baro, the ruthless king of egoism, to follow his lead. Emphasis on was. Every day I wake up and I hope you're dead! Snuffy's strategy relied on Ubers working as a team and accounting for the pre-examined data of Bastard's team. However, the game became so rigid and logical in its approach to scoring that it was near a stalemate. Asagi began to digest that he couldn't fight Ubers alone and employed others in his tactics more adamantly, which wasn't the craziest shift, but created unexpected circumstances Snuffy probably hadn't accounted for. Meanwhile, Baro, who unlocked a crazy ability, was seething and at the verge of breaking formation because he understood no matter what tactic Snuffy dished out, that he was going to be underutilized. Baro actually breaking from Snuffy's tactics not only change the game, but the influence that it will have narratively going forward will be huge. Baro's aesthetic approach to perceiving the field breaks from the cold, rigid logic of Metavision. Predator Eye is a way of looking at the field that I would assume identifies the weak points of not just the goalie's positioning, as Snuffy overutilized it for, and Asagi analyzed in his own inner monologue, but even people right in front of him. Possibly even clusters of players in the distance on the field. Maybe I'm overhyping it, but this is one time where I'm skeptical of Asagi's evaluation because Baro never stops evolving. And while Baro's decision to defect was incredibly risky because he is actually moving against the predetermined cogs of logic that the most high IQ players adapted to reading, it is the same risk that provides him the chaotic capacity to create miracles. It was such an incredibly beautiful moment watching him score because his ego is on the line. Metavision is a perspective of the field rooted in logic rather than a skill. And because it relies on cold, indisputable logic, it is easily accessible for many people to adapt. It's a kind of generic perspective, not so Predator Eye. Predator Eye is a departure from Metavision that lets go of the cold logic for a truly vulnerable, aesthetic-based perspective of the field. And I think this type of aesthetic will be something that we begin to see in other characters going forward. Dare I say that this egoic evolution will be necessary to advance going forward, because almost everyone can look over their shoulders and determine field positions, but not everyone can see those positions and scan for specific elements that they can capitalize off of to assist their very specific playstyles. However, this isn't the first time we've been exposed to such a different perspective, just the first time it has been portrayed with such intentful imagery. I have a theory that Rin was the first person that we've witnessed peek into this new perception. His view of the field relied on bringing out the best of his opponents so that he could tear them apart at their best. This isn't a logical approach, it's risky and egoic 
because he's going across the field begging for 1v1s that potentially he may not be ready for. However, I think more is going to be exposed about Rin's perspective soon. I think I want to do another video on the destined Rin versus Asagi match because I think Asagi is now in a prime stance to be the direct foil to the way Rin's ego has developed and exposed itself on the field. I think that's a topic for another video though. If you like this video, buckle up. But back to the main point. Baro's awakening can aid us in imagining what other people's awakenings will look like. We just talked about Rin, but I'm going to use an even more terrifying but low-key example that has been heavily teased for quite a while now. This bald guy. Hear me out. Imagine a soccer player whose way of looking at the field focuses on the most fallible players and circumstances for the best penalty shots. Game-altering fouls that target key players on the opposite team. The possibility of this has already been presented in this Buddha bald guy. And there are other characters whose egos have evolved to navigating the field in ways that probably will get them a spotlight for the next narrative of ego development. Bachira and his monster mode copycat dude has already been cooking up and experimenting with the way he goes about shifting from one character to the next. Devil Man, whatever his name is, I love him. You can go as far to start imagining a lot of the characters, but until it's seen, it's all just speculation. It's something to look forward to though, like future videos from this channel. I hope you enjoy it. I certainly had a lot of fun making this video. I cannot wait for the next chapter to drop and for us to see who is winning this match. What do you guys think? Comment, do you think Bastard is taking this away? Or do you think Ubers is taking this? Let me know in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm out.